Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and to the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Good morning again. Could we just take a minute, and well, less than a minute actually, and just take a deep breath, hold it for a few seconds, and then let it out, letting those cares that we bring with us dissipate just for a moment. Would you join me, please? Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, we ask you to defend your church from all false teaching and give to your people knowledge of your truth that we may enjoy eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to Timothy. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things and of Jesus Christ, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ which he will bring about in the right time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be all honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich. Command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus told them this parable. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. 
And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus at his side. He called out, Father, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send me Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, then, Father, I beg you, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Abraham said to him, If they do not believe in Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This reading, I think for many of us, can be very troubling. Not because this guy passed by Lazarus every day and then found out that was a problem, because most of us don't do that. Most of us, if there was someone lying in our path, whether it's in you know, downtown Toronto or downtown St. Catharines where you see homeless people lying, or frankly, just out here in our stair stairwell where we often find people passed out and perhaps in difficulty, most of us wouldn't pass that person by forever. Maybe quickly one time, but not certainly again. The problem is that this guy did pass him by many times. St. John Chrysostom has a, a, just a wonderful sermon on this particular reading in which he says to his congregation, you know, this guy passed by every day and missed the fact that there was a problem right in front of him. How could you possibly do that? And then your eyesight is so good that you can see Lazarus from the far side of a cavern and pick him out. Nothing wrong with this guy's sight. What was wrong was the guy's context. Now, I don't know how many of you follow uh, various personality typers, but I am an I on the Myers-Briggs scale. I know nobody believes that when I tell them because I do not look like an introvert when I'm standing up here. But for me, this takes a lot of energy. I love doing it, but it takes a lot of energy, and I go home and sleep in the afternoon on Sundays. Being an I is not the way you appear to be to the outside world. It's where you get your energy from. One of the problems I, and this is typical of people who are introverts, one of the problems I have is that when I get really busy for whatever reason and things are weighing heavily on my mind, I become one of those horses, you know, that runs around Elmira and whatnot with blinkers on 
or sometimes not just restrictive blinkers, but complete blinkers. And some of those horses do indeed run down the roads with no eyesight whatsoever because they trust the driver. The problem, of course, is if the driver isn't watching, they can easily run into something else and will. It does happen. Now, that is part of my human nature. And if you look at various ways of studying personality types, there are all kinds of other things. But I know I have a problem. In most cases, I can sit here and know that someone is having a crisis. I didn't quite pick it up last week before that poor woman passed out. By the way, she was out here uh, yesterday watching the parade going by and dancing. So she's fine. I don't always pick up on things that are going on though if I'm preoccupied with other things. And that has been confirmed for me with various counselors and things like that, that yeah, you gotta be careful. You may have a similar kind of thing. That doesn't mean I'm gonna ignore someone who's lying on the sidewalk in front of me. But it does mean that perhaps in that moment, I may think to myself, oh, I'll get back to this person and see how they're doing later. What happens if that's the moment that they are going under from an opioid overdose? What happens if that's the moment before they start to get sick because they have not had, I mean vomit, before, because they have not had breakfast or lunch or even dinner? Because the reality in our world is that someone who's vomiting in public is gonna become a pariah really quickly. The first thing that goes through our minds is what the heck is wrong with this person and do I want to be involved? Or where can I get a hazmat suit to put on? The problem with the rich guy was he was so preoccupied that he didn't see these kinds of things. And I think sometimes our problems, and I'm not guilt tripping you, but our problems are that we get so busy that we don't see them. And there's the call to a spiritual reality. When we get that busy, when we are that preoccupied with whatever it is that is going on in your life, and it doesn't matter, it can be that too many buses came into the terminal all at once. It can be that there's a problem in your family. It can be that you're busy and like me, preoccupied, and you don't quite see what's going on in the periphery. But whatever it is, take a moment. Take a moment and take a deep breath several times, three, four, five times, hold it for a few seconds and let it out. Now, let me say, if you begin to feel lightheaded or faint, for heaven's sake, stop doing it. But that breathing exercise, that yoga breathing, that Lama's breathing, whatever you wanna call it, slows you down. And all of a sudden the blinkers be able to come off or will be able to come off. Why is that important? Because whenever one of those things is affecting you, there is the opportunity for you to miss what God is saying to you. And that can become a big problem, especially if whatever is preoccupying you goes on for a long time. Are you worried about a math test coming up? Are you worried about French composition coming up? Is it really preoccupying you? Take a deep breath, hold it for a few seconds, and let it out. Do it several times. You can lower your blood pressure that way. You can slow yourself down that way. And you can take the blinkers off. Now, it sounds simple, doesn't it? The catch is we got to remember to do it. Because in those moments, you're often thinking, I just want to get on and solve the problem. But in getting on and solving the problem, you may not see what else is going on around you.
In our prayers this morning, we hold before God the Gaylor Martin, Galway, Gregory, Gabriel, Grusha, Freeman, Hallaby, Howison, and Hallett families. We remember and give thanks for the work of the Samaritan Foundation, Dominican Advance, and the ongoing ministry and work of Not Just Tourists. We pray for those who are homeless, for their safety, health, and salvation. In the Niagara Diocese, we remember St. John Cheapside, the Reverend Canon Richard Moores, rector, and the people of that parish. We hold before God members of the St. Thomas family who are not well or have asked for our prayers and all those we hold before God either out loud or in the silence of our hearts. We hold before God in prayerful support Justin of Canterbury, Linda, our primate, Anne, the Archbishop of Ontario, Susan, our bishop, and all those who work at Cathedral Place. Sheila, the Archdeacon of Lincoln, Kevin, our Rector, Philip, John, and Jason, our Honorary Assistants, Aaron, Charles, Tim, and James, our Wardens. Everlasting God, you are the source of growth, and blessed are those who love you. We come before you now seeking your love, your way, your peace, offering our love, our choices, our worship, listening for wisdom, for challenge, for your ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, you call us to follow and you warn us of the cost of discipleship as your love overwhelms all our life. We pray for those who pay a very high cost for faith as they face danger, persecution, or death for what they believe. We remember those who cry out for peace as they work in their communities and across the world to end conflict. Not only that, but we pray for those who speak up against systems of power as they seek to transform economics and politics for the good of all. Help us to work together so that truth and justice, harmony and fairness flourish among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Father in heaven, strengthen the unity of your church and those of us who dwell therein, so that we who have been fed by holy things may now go on to fulfill your will in the world around us, not being distracted by the cares of the world and our own cares, but focused on the Holy Spirit and how that is working through our lives. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, 
our Lord. Amen. Would you stand, please? Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Remember, my friends, now that it is our job to go out and watch for Lazarus because there are so many Lazaruses in the world, not in an unsafe way, please, but in a Holy Spirit way, in a way that will bring the hands and feet of Jesus Christ to those among us who may very well need our help. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of Christ Jesus, his Son, our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with us and Lazarus always. Amen.